coffee, fast food convention, uh, you know, EcoWare, I mean, as well. Yeah, thank you. Uh, you know, everyone, Munishra has been uh, with us right from the beginning. So has Kapil. Uh, you know, so, so that being said, I'm, I'm not going to introduce the pa uh, panelists or uh, the topic. I think Kapil is going to do a way better job at that than I am. So I'll hand this over to Kapil. So Kapil, over to you. And guys, thank you again. Thanks for being a part of this. Thanks, George. So uh, good evening, everyone. Thanks, uh, George and the entire team at Oddbox for giving me this opportunity again to moderate uh, a fantastic session. Uh, I remember when Minnie gave me a call and she said, Kapil, we want to talk about sustainable packaging. You know, uh, incidentally, over the last three or four months, I have been evaluating this space uh, in, the, in my personal capacity as an angel investor. I have looked at some companies down south. I've looked at some other companies. Uh, space as well and why is my attention on this not that i'm a microbiologist or anything else but i think from the pure reason of two things one is the love for the planet and more importantly what i also believe is investors the opportunity to make money and to make impact so i believe that this space at the moment although might be going through a tough uh, spin but i believe in the next uh, few years for sure this would be a space to watch out for uh, and when investors look at it like this, that means this is some. This is a space that definitely is going to grow in the future. Uh, very quickly, I'm going to introduce myself, uh, and then I love my panelists to sh share their views about themselves in a few words as well. Uh, my name is Kapil Malhotra. I'm the founder, managing director of Total Solutions Group. I'm a chartered accountant by qualification. Uh, Total Solutions Group is an advisory and a consulting. Uh, we are Asia's largest, amongst the largest uh, customer experience mystery uh, shopping company. Uh, we, we work with a lot of food and beverage brands, retail, automotive, banking, um, where our core specialization is. Uh, work with the e-commerce players as well. We have a very strong training digital platform by the name iTrain that has won a few awards too. Um, as I mentioned, in my personal capacity, I've invested in over 21 odd companies in the startup space. Um, and they're doing pretty well for themselves. Uh, great time to be a part of, as an angel investor to support, mentor, and advise uh, startups. And um, I think today's session is going to be a great one. We have a very good mix of uh, people from, from the industry. We have uh, Sandeep uh, from Burger King. Uh, we have Rakesh from Zomato. We have Munishwar from Wow Momos. And then we have Ria from Ecoware and Weber uh, from Zoom, who's going who gonna to talk about you know, uh, you know, what they manufacture and how is it coming in the industry. So uh, very quickly, Sandeep, let's start with you. If you can quickly introduce yourselves, and then I'm just going to pass the, the bag around. Sure, sure, Kapil, and, and and thanks once again for inviting me to be a part of this conversation. Uh, it's a it's a great privilege, and I'm happy to be here. So my name is Sandeep. I have been in the industry for almost more than two decades now, uh, 22, 23 years uh, of experience. Uh, worked for a variety of industries. Started with uh, Unilever, worked with GSK, Renbaxi, Yum Brands uh, for almost about six, seven years before I joined Burger King. I joined Burger King um, in the year 2014, and a couple of you remember I was telling you first April is the joining date, but uh, but that didn't jinx my experience here. So so the brand is really doing well, and I'm happy to be a part of this company. I'm one of the founding member in India. Um, yeah, quite excited to have this conversation, and uh, yeah, looking forward. Thank you. Lovely to have you on board, uh, Sandeep. As you mentioned, we're aware that you're one of the founding members, and you brought a lot of innovation in the space and uh, good luck to you. Uh, let me move on to now uh, Ria from EcoWare. Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, thank you for having me. I, you know, I, I'm excited to be here because this is obviously a, a topic that's really close to my heart and I'm very honored to be the only woman on this panel. Um, so there you go. But um, by background, I'm a pharmacologist. I used to work for Pfizer in the UK and I moved to India in 2009 and decided I'd had enough of the pharma world and um, decided to become an entrepreneur, which is when I started EcoWare. And what we, we are India's most recognized um, sustainable packaging company. We've been on this journey now for 11 years. 
And, you know, we took what was typically a commoditized business and branded it and created a whole new vertical around it. So, yeah. Fantastic, Ria. Thanks a lot. Munishwar, Bar Mormons. Hi, Kapil. Once again, thank you for inviting for a panel discussion and all. So, guys, uh, myself, Munishwar, I am associated with this brand, Wow Momo, from more than three and a half years. Before that, I've worked with many of the brands like McDonald's, Yum, uh, Yum Brands, and the cinemas and all. So, this is the one of the exciting journey which I am having over here, where I've seen the startup culture going into a next level and building a brand which is a homegrown brand in the market and creating a great valuation to the stakeholders and the, to the economy also and that's all is about me. Fantastic, very proud of having an Indian brand Wow Momo who's doing so well and good luck to you as well. Rakesh, let's hear from you. Zomato. Thanks Kapil. Um, I'm Rakesh. Uh, I lead sales for Zomato online ordering. Uh, fairly new to the industry, been three years in Zomato, but the kind of uh, growth, the kind of evolution the food del delivery space has mostly seen in the last three years, it's almost equal to maybe seven, eight years in the industry. So it's been great. Uh, and I would say that um, I'm actually very, very excited to be a part of this uh, panel discussion. Uh, not because I think I can contribute a lot, but because I think I can absorb a lot. Uh, I have been a sort of an internal proponent of uh, trying to move towards uh, or at least push restaurants towards sustainable packaging. And I've tried that, I think not with a lot of effort, but with some effort in the last one year. And I think a year and a half back is when I and Web have spoken on exactly this. And um, we have made very, very limited progress. So. <laughs> I'm really, really looking forward to ways in which we could sort of figure ways in which we could actually make this bigger. Fantastic. Thanks, Rakesh, for taking out your time today, and we look forward to the conversation. Weber, Zoom, let's hear from you. Sure. Uh, thanks, Kapil. Uh, hey, everyone. Uh, happy to be here. Uh, my name is Webhav Goyal. Uh, I am the Managing Director of Zoom India and VP of Zoom. Uh, Zoom is a technology company. Uh, we make technology for food supply chain and packaging automation. Uh, fairly new to packaging, less than a year and a half. Uh, I moved back to you. My background is primarily gaming. I used to make games, mobile games and web games. Uh, I moved, uh, I've been part of Zoom uh, since the start. It's a five-year-old company. We're based out of Mountain View. Uh, back to India last year to set up our international operations. And I'm really, really excited to talk about uh, our molded fiber technology and sustainable packaging in general, because uh, as everybody on the panel just mentioned, like there's a huge opportunity. And I think it's the right time to kind of have uh, a discussion like this. So really looking forward to it. Fantastic. Welcome, Vapor. Pleasure having you on board. So let me uh, now get into the meat of the conversation. Sandeep, I'm going to put the first question to you. So you are the core founding members of Burger King. You've seen how the brand came into India. You, 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 you put on, on you know, that core team meetings, the founder team meetings. Uh, the last few years, we've seen your brand becoming visible. We've seen you know your logos everywhere, which is great. Your footprint is increasing. Uh, the pandemic, you know, when it hit us in the end, the last week of March, and then April and May, and then and now that we are in, in September, how have you uh, utilized or understood this as a problem and an opportunity? And what has Burger King done at this point of time? Because I'm sure customers in the first few weeks were initially very wary of eating, ordering, and other things as well. And Burger King, we understand, is an international brand. You guys have a lot of responsibility on you. What have you guys done to turn this problem into an opportunity and to win the trust of your customers? Yeah, sure, sure, Kapil. Um, you know, I think uh, um, you asked the right question because, uh, you know, um, in 2014 is when we started this brand. But if you ask me, we are restarting the brand uh, now. So, so, so this is a situation where everything has gone back to basics, and you are, you have an opportunity actually to restart it everything, uh, start from scratch, and build it the way you want to build it. So, see, I mean, uh, if you ask me, this all started with the health crisis, 
but very soon became a financial crisis and today if you ask me it's more of a humanitarian crisis right yeah. and different people and different organizations are responding to it differently there is a there's a saying and i i, I actually love that saying that um, and this is by the way said very frequently by my ex boss niren chaudhary who heads uh, panera uh, internationally he keeps saying that if there is a storm you can either find a bunker and choose and you know hide yourself there and wait for the storm to pass by or you can actually build a windmill and draw electricity out of it right so 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 there are brands who have actually chosen to create opportunity out of this crisis and those are the brand i can guarantee are going to emerge out of the situation as winners right and and let's let's look at the situation there are some temporary shifts which are happening like example wearing a mask and going out and maintaining social distance i can guarantee this is a temporary stuff because once the vaccine is out or the treatment is in place we are going to be off that but then there will be some permanent shift like the entire awareness towards health and hygiene right that has dialed up and i can tell you this is going to stay on and it's going to be passed on from generation to generation so there is a fundamental shift similarly in the business environment we are seeing there are some fundamental shift consumers decision making actually is changing from you know a, a typical discount led price led decision making to more around trust brand and value a combination of that led decision and i can guarantee rakesh can share a lot of his insights because he must be seeing that in his business and at least we are seeing that in a, and actually we keep having this conversation on the same lines right and this is a shift which is going to stay on for long so what does that mean for a brand now you have to now change your priority and focus around quality building credibility building that trust and that's an area where packaging can play a significant role and i'll try and explain try and explain through some examples and you know vaivav and uh, uh, my colleagues here who are there in the panel can actually add tons of value in that i mean i can share from a consumer side what do we expect what do we plan to do what are our priorities and then we'll have to work together you know to 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 build that to reality right so so there's a fundamental shift which has happened in our business also so our business used to be pre covid 80 85% business is to happen inside the premise which is a dine in business now it has flipped the other way around now about 80 85 of the, and you know thanks to rakesh and his team and uh, other players in the market it has flipped the other way around 80 85 now is delivery take away and on the go and what plays the most important role here packaging right so packaging's responsibility now has become manifold couple of ways first it has to ensure that they deliver the packaging deliver the brand's promise of hygiene assurance and i'll give an example in burking what we have done when this pandemic hit us now after we make our burger we put it in a clam shell but then we put that clam shell inside a paper bag which is fully sealed through self adhesive tape along with that we provide a hand sanitizer and a personalized sign letter by the restaurant general manager confirming to the fact that every aspect of health hygiene safety protocol has been followed so basically the when the food leaves from our kitchen until it reaches the guest's kitchen it is untouched it's a 100% contactless delivery that reinforces the trust in the consumer's mind and they will then come back and experience the brand again and again so there is an roi it's not just a cost it's an roi for sure other than that see the entire packaging in our business was designed keeping in mind dine in but delivery is a different ball game it's a different animal where the food has to really sustain for another 15 20 20 25 minutes of transit right how do you make sure that your packaging solution solves for temperature integrity product integrity how do you make sure that hot food is delivered hot cold food is delivered cold crispy food is del delivered crispy and so on and so forth again the answer is very simple packaging right, right? right. other than this functional there is also one more point you know uh, see if you want to build a brand which is a credible brand it has to be it has to demonstrate credibility through every aspect Aspects, not just branding, not just food quality, not just operation quality, to the last mile delivery capability, to to the uh, to the packaging what they're producing, right? Every element has to echo that philosophy, echo the brand ethos, and that's where sustainable packaging plays a significant role. And I'm giving stress on the word sustainable. 
it not just demonstrates quality it actually demonstrates the brand ethos right so if i have to really summarize in short in the current context where most of the brands priority is to reestablish credibility reestablish trust sustainable packaging has a long way to go sustainable packaging has a fantastic role to play in delivering our ambition so with that i hand it back to kapil and if you have any questions during the during the session we can really uh, have a conversation fantastic i think you you really put it out you set the tone of today's conversation by stamping uh, authority in terms of giving a very clear path to packaging and sustainable packaging uh, especially in today's time and um, you know looping in rakesh now on this because as as sandeep said rakesh that you know uh, pre covid it was a different <coughs> world post covid uh, things have totally changed i also advise a few brands which were only dine in they never did delivery yeah. the international headquarters never did delivery right and uh, when i spoke to them in early april i said guys you need to start trying delivery get the consumer confidence get your packaging product branding right in the month of july august whenever doors open the customers that would have ordered through delivery will be the first ones who will walk in for dine in but if you don't yeah. do that your brand is almost gone and how will you remain in touch so coming yeah. to you akesh you know i think one of the things that you also believe that you know consumers although i agree what sandeep is saying that you know you know as consumers we we, we wouldn't mind paying an extra percentage towards hygiene health and safety however at the end of the day we are consumers who dish and fish for discounts for for you know better bang for the buck uh, we always looking at <coughs> other things as well yes the awareness and the acceptance level is totally changed so at zomato today uh, you know i believe larger brands uh, you know are taking you know are taking great measures because of which i think they are getting uh, a better response what do you see at the as the sales head of zomato what do you see what are happening to smaller brands as well what is the yeah. consumer inside what do you think the next step needs to happen here rakesh sure thanks kapil and thanks sandeep uh, i think that really sets the tone um let me just start off by sharing maybe a little bit of non packaging insights and let me see if i can sort of dovetail into packaging some way right um i think a bunch of things have happened um and permanently so is uh, and i think you were also saying this at the start i was in fact hearing a podcast today on equity crunch uh and there was this conversation about will people you know there's of course a big ed tech boom right now right because kids are at home parents don't know what to do so get them into a coding class get them into something right and there's a big ed tech boom uh and there was this inadvertent question is that when schools reopen will we hence move to a world when all of this is going to go bust but what really came out of that conversation is that what is permanently going to change is a lot of businesses will have an offline and an online coexistence versus it being a 10 game right so i think for for uh, for a long period of time university degrees student education all of that will always have a mix of offline and online now versus you know one being versus the other in the past right and i think the food industry is also has already underwent that fundamental shift am i a dine in am i a delivery only restaurant i think that question is going to become or it has already become extremely irrelevant right you are a restaurant you are supposed to serve food right and the way you need to see is that how do i change my business model to optimize depending on how many people are coming to me and how many people i am going to right for a very long period of time a lot of restaurants a lot of uh, you know uh, players in the food sector have seen delivery as a side kick right um and mainly a kitchen you know utilization tool that my kitchen is not perfectly utilized during 3 to 7 o'clock so i want to do delivery so that you know my kitchen staff is not free and i get a slightly better turnover right and that i think that those questions are out of the park now and that's why you will see a lot of people struggling uh, i i can bet that you know a lot of fine dining restaurants don't know how to do their packaging they have absolutely no clue 
right? Um, and they want to do a lot of stuff, but they don't know where to start, right? Uh, so I think as and when, um, large part of the food consumption is going to move on the delivery side. Packaging in particular becomes even more um, important and pertinent a topic for everyone to solve for, right? So I think that's one. And how do we sort of get there is something that we should uncover during and whether sustainable packaging can play that role or not. And probably I will try to pay a little bit of devil's advocate and try and see if we can really crank up the conversation there, right? Um, I think first point that I really wanted to establish is there is a need for good packaging. Can sustainable packaging play that role or not is a question we should ask, right? Uh, so that's the first. Uh, second is from a consumption pattern, definitive change in consumption pattern. Uh, if you were to look at the kind of discounts, offers, et cetera, that used to run in the month of Feb versus what runs right now, they've come down by 40 to 50%. But has the market recovered in terms of, you know, gross merchandise value in terms of revenue on the delivery side by almost 70 to 80%. So what does this mean? This means multiple things. One, the consumer who's coming and buying in right now is someone who's more discreet, right? someone who's buying because he has a certain level of faith in outside food consumption and hence the right set of user that you will want to onboard right so this is the time second is on an average that consumers average purchase ticket size has moved up by 35 to 40 percent depending on which brand you're operating but that's that's broadly the reason it has moved and the reason it has moved is that food delivery has made inroads to home it was always something that you will uh, eat at office. It, will, it was always something that you will use, uh, you will uh, order as a meal for one, right? Um, average number of items per order have increased. Not that people's appetite, appetite has increased, right? It's largely because now people are ordering for their families because they are with the family. And that's why the, you know, the other part which is now starting to come and we get a lot of questions around is, you know, I'm ordering for my family. I'm now ordering for my kid's birthday. Is the packaging safe? Is the way you're carrying the food safe? Is the way you're making and preparing the food, uh, it is safe or not? So to give you an example, when we launched our max safety initiative, which is, you know, we have eight safety measures. Right. Um, our uh, video was watched a million times on our app. And we used, you know, we just put it in a small space in the left thinking that no one is going to open it, but it's been watched a million times in a month. Uh, which means people actually go and see what really is max safety. So there is a lot of hygiene and health consciousness. I think that's the uh, second part of it. Um, and third part is outside larger businesses, like top five, six QSRs, can be really percolated down. Both the need for packaging, both the definitive trends in terms of, you know, how part of the behavior is going to shift to online or takeaway, and hence need for something like that. Because while a Burger King would figure out, even if it has to spend another 2% on packaging, it will figure out the, uh, you know, the 2% from somewhere in the whole operation stack, right? They will modify the fryers, they will do something here and there, and they'll probably get the 2% up, right? Uh, but the guy who's doing 1,000 orders a month out of a single operating outlet, for him, the 2% is super critical. So either the government needs to pay for it, or the aggregator needs for to pay for it, or the consumer needs to pay for it. He's not going to pay for it, right? So, and I think widespread change will come only when something of that sort happens, right? Uh, broadly, these three is what I thought I would share. I have bunch bunch of questions to share. I don't really have great answers, but I can post them as and when we uh, proceed for the rest of the discussion. Absolutely, Rakesh. I'd love to have you as a co-moderator. Let me get Rhea into the hotspot now because uh, I think Rhea you started in 2009 so you were the earlier proponents of sustainable packaging in the country in in, in one way and uh, it's been 10 11 years I'm sure you've seen you know zero to to what it is now uh, and in one way looking at uh, what's happening with uh, the COVID situation looking at deliveries uh, you know as as Rakesh mentioned, you know the the, the average value size, uh, more meals for families now, uh, kids at home looking at what packaging is coming, the food is coming in. Um, I remember we had a birthday celebration in the month of uh, June, and uh, we finally ordered from uh, uh, 
a five star hotel from Aero City. And that was our first order that we made for Dipuri. Uh, we weren't sure, you know, where should we order from. Um, the packaging, uh, the way the product was delivered, everything was top notch. Uh, mm -hmm. And we were ready to pay value for it as a customer because it was an occasion, right? Uh, now we're talking about, I just had uh, some pizzas for lunch, which was again ordered from a, from a brand. Uh, over the last 10, 11 years, how have you seen the shift happen, Priya? And at Ecoware, where do you think this shift is going to move towards in the next couple of years? Um, thanks, Kapil. So, I mean, the shift, we, you know, when I started this organization, yeah. there was basically, uh, this was much before any Clean India campaign, any sort of Swatch Bharat, any awareness, any plastic bans even being enforced, right? I mean, in the last few years, we've at least seen uh, Karnataka and Maharashtra uh, enforce to some extent their plastic bans. So when we started, I think our largest and our biggest challenge was that um, we obviously had no, uh, you know, nothing to help us from a public policy sort of angle. Um, we also, none of our stakeholders actually understood what it meant for a product to be completely biodegradable, compostable, right? There were no industry standards. So we were really starting from scratch. Uh, we spent a lot of time educating all our stakeholders uh, looking at obviously, you know, we um, authenticity is something that's really important to me. And I know we touched upon that when we spoke. I definitely am doing this for the right reasons. I, you know, I, I want to distinguish ourselves from the the massive amounts of greenwash that's out there. So, one thing that's really important to us is that we certify every claim that we make on our product. And um, that, you know, in a situation in a time like now, obviously helps build uh, and bring back confidence uh when you you know there is a lot of um, there's a lot of question of what you what you can and cannot trust um especially in terms of what you're bringing into your house and um, feeding your families um so we've seen um like i said we've spent a lot of time educating creating awareness we've seen the uh, we've seen the entire sort of sustainable packaging world and this market evolve um from people not understanding um, to then, okay, asking for it. And uh, we've seen plastic bans come in. Um, so I think, you know, now we're in a situation where we are, the demand is very much there. We are having conversations with a lot of people where it's like, okay, can you customize for us? Can you make for us? Can you co-brand? You know, how does this work? Um, so, and, and it's great because we're in a position where we, you know, just sitting in my office, there are inbound inquiries, not just within India, but globally. Um, so it's a it's a great place to be in. Um, and I think moving forward for us, um, you know, I think innovation is really important. So we've obviously made large strides in the food and beverage industry. And that's a plug and play uh, format for us now. Um, and I think, you know, what we're looking at as an organization is that how, what are the other industries that we can support uh, with sustainable packaging can we work with e-commerce can we work with industrial packaging can we you know what is it that we can do next because obviously single-use plastic is a massive problem um, and you know we wish to be um, a solution across industries so so Ria, looking at the current I'm just going to do a quick leading question looking at the current situation uh, consumer awareness I think is at at its highest right uh, cost parity is, I won't say, you know, neck to neck, but, but it's not like totally out of uh, the economics. Uh, yeah. Uh, and <laughs> brands are adopting sustainable packaging because consumers are giving their loyalty towards it, right? We've seen a lot of waves coming around it. So brands are using it as a branding tool as well, right? Yeah. However, we see a lot of disparity between states where some states have banned it, some states are not banning plastics as well. So as a wish list and as an entrepreneur and as an entrepreneur who's leading a sustainable packaging business, I understand there's a GST challenge right from the product that you source because at some places GST is not applicable. So how do you take the input of it when you're selling it? There is a GST. What would be your wish list? 
uh, go ahead, no problem. It might come true. <laughs> today. Go ahead. So, you know, I think what we're seeing now is that more than 100% of growth in the food segment is now focused on this better for you space, right? So everyone's looking at good ingredients, you know, healthy food, um, you know, just the good stuff, basically, uh, to feed you the good stuff. And I genuinely believe that obviously good food and good packaging go hand in hand. There is absolutely no point in serving the purest of ingredients in, you know, plastic or styrofoam. I, that just doesn't work for me um, as an entrepreneur or as a consumer. And I mean, I have two kids, so I wouldn't bring that sort of stuff home either. Um, I think that, you know, I what I loved about the what I loved about the plastic ban in Karnataka was that it it worked because it was citizen led. Okay. There was this immense amount of uh, understanding, this knowledge. It was an educated choice, right? That people were making. My wish list is that if I could educate 1.3 billion people about not using plastic. And I'm not saying that ecoware is a is the answer for everything. There's absolutely, I mean, that's not what I'm saying. However, I do encourage and I do believe that everyone should use their business as a platform for change. And you have the power to influence your consumers, right? You can influence them to move from rampant consumerism to conscious consumerism. And that is really what the planet needs right now. Um, so if you can use a reusable, great. If you can use a disposable, then please don't be using plastic. Um, obviously, GST is, you know, on my wish list. We've so spoken about it. Um, I don't see why, uh, you know, we're well aligned. We use agri waste uh, and, you know, we're well aligned to the prime minister's waste to wealth, um, you know, idea and all that sort of stuff. And we've also created a huge amount of impact that we've been recognized for, which is social um, from a social uh, perspective, from an environmental perspective. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think those were the those would be the two two things on my wish list. Fantastic. So I'm going to now move to Weber. Munishwa, you're going to be after that. Wait, thanks for jumping in. We're going to go more, uh, move to you at the end of it. So uh, Weber, you you you've been a guy with a gaming experience. What are you doing in the sustainable packaging industry? I know you're doing a great job, but. Uh, no, I, I ask my, uh, that question to myself sometimes as well, but uh, I'm glad to be in, in, in this industry. So I want to pick up on something uh, Sandeep said. So he said, look, uh, the brands want the ethos when like, they want the coherent experience for the consumer. Now, Zoom started as a pizza company, okay? When Alex, who's our CEO and I, so Alex is also a gaming guy. So we used to work at Zynga and then we started Zoom Pizza. And our whole point was, look, pizza is the most unstable food how can we deliver it better? And we came up with this radical idea that we'll just cook it while it's being delivered. Okay, so we made fully automated robotic trucks, which delivered pizza while it was cooking. Okay, not a hard thing to pull off. And you're trying to figure out what do we use for packaging because we didn't want to use cardboard boxes. Because in order to keep a pizza stabilized in a cardboard box, you have to add nitrate and sugars to maintain that crispiness, right? And at that point in time, we said, look, we are going to stabilize food using physics and not chemistry. And we started looking out for solutions. And we had no background in packaging and we designed a pizza box. We found this small company in China, which, which charged just $2 for every box. And we said, let's do it. Let's see how it happens. And we ended up winning this DuPont Packaging Award, which is like the Oscar of packaging. And we were like the only non-packaging company ever to win it. And that is when uh, we realized that, look, we actually are sitting on something very, very valuable, which is the market need. And that is when we started investing in technology. So that is how like, we kind of grew, grew from a pizza robotic company to like mobile kitchens and then finally sustainable packaging. Uh, I'm, I'm still a gamer. I still play a lot of games. Uh, but uh, that's where we are. So, so I completely understand what Sandeep is saying. And that's where our focus is. So our packaging is primarily focused on food delivery because that is where we foresee the plastic problem being like, like multiplied. Like Rakesh mentioned, uh, and Sandeep also mentioned, uh, the order sizes are growing. Uh, in dining is converting into deliveries. Zomato used to do, I'm sure there are more bigger, like when I met you, Rakesh, you said like million orders per day. Now think about that, right? Million orders, every order has like two, at least two uh, pieces of packaging, 
primarily single use plastic and that's all going to landfill and ocean india luckily has a 60% recycling rate but still like we still ending up uh, putting a lot of things in the ocean like i live in mumbai i, I see what happens in like what these garbage trucks do right so and that's what we want to focus on so uh, so in terms of so so then the question is the cost so it, it so we have to come up with technology so that it becomes easier for brands like burger king to adopt it as well as the long tail that rakesh was talking about right because like those are the mom and pops who actually are like you know them in your neighborhood right and you trust them already but if their food shows up in a black plastic container they like yeah like you can do better right so that's where we are trying to tackle and the way to do that in my opinion is combining the fact that consumers want better products in terms of sustainability government is pushing yet not enforcing but there is an intent so let's let's say that there is an intent from the government side and then there is this uh, brand push as well uh, i'll give you an example we were working with this us brand it's a smoothie brand and uh, we got an email from the ceo and he sent us a twitter uh, post some surfer in la on a bright sunny morning had a piece of their plastic cup which he found while surfing in the ocean and he frantically called us and said look like my brand is over like we need to change this is like if if i get more posts like this like we are done like it's california like and like surfers are finding our uh, plastic pet cups in the ocean so that's the kind of urgency we are seeing uh so i think the there's still a premium the technology is not there uh but we are getting close it's not two to three times that it used to be five or six years ago 10 years ago uh i think we are somewhere between 20 to 25% premium and then we have to figure out how do we how do we split how much does the consumer pay there is some willingness how much can governments subsidize and how much can brand think about them as reducing cac it's essentially your marketing expense right you have two restaurants on zomato right and they have this hyper pure thing let's say one restaurant has hyper pure sustainable packaging as a tag and the other one doesn't and both of them have 4.8 star ratings and both of them have awesome biryani like it will make a difference i know so where they, my daughter is going to order from i i mean yeah. just just yeah. to let so you think, know. yeah so i think that's where we want to play so uh, we are setting up a manufacturing facility here in india to try and bring the cost down right now our manufacturing facility is in california not the cheapest place to make stuff uh but we are making in roads so hopefully 6 to 6 months from now we'll start manufacturing and uh, we'll be able to kind of be at par or almost at par with us so that's that's where i see this uh, packaging for food delivery going wow that's interesting comment that you made at last uh, end of your statement so you're saying that you're getting your manufacturing here you will bring the cost as equal to plastic is that what you said can i hold you on that Yes, you can. In some cases, you can. Uh, for example, the bowl. Like so, again, like the 750 ml bowl and the 500 ml bowl. So what we've done is we've been able to make these anti-leak products, which actually perform at par with plastic. So you can put them in food delivery, rotate them around, do whatever. It won't leak. So that's like it's it's difficult to do that in molded fiber, but we've been able to achieve that. Uh, for those products, we will be at par when we are manufacturing here in India. Right now, we are at 20-ish percent premium. because we are getting it imported and there's a 10% import duty like that just takes you 10% from us uh, okay. so we, we will be at par you can hold me to that vevo so, i i sorry 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 to just jump in vevo i think you made my day i think this is the best uh, time okay. of the day i I'll had i'll give you that box i'll, I'll so, send you some samples so i i i am in a note of it so i'm going to reach out to you monday itself <laughs> see that's why that's why we host these panels why do we do it absolutely right. absolutely fantastic so very good web so i'm just going to lead into that again you know this is a very capital intensive business yes. that you're in i'm a chartered accountant and advisor i can just keep on talking and make my money and you know just hear the the cash register ringing you guys yeah. need to put in cash you need you need to you need to it's a capital intensive business it is how many factories are going to be set up i want to invest into this business yeah. i'm trying to understand is there a different way to you know bunch orders uh, manufacturers uh, r&d innovation there has to be something around it yeah i'm i'm glad you asked that question so so we are a softbank vision fund company we've raised 500 million dollars okay 
Uh, now, when I went to the board and said, hey, I want to put a manufacturing facility in India and it's going to cost tens of millions of dollars, they said no, right? Because they said, like, manufacturing is not where we see money should go. So what we ended up doing was we started partnering up with industrial partners, people who are really good at manufacturing. It doesn't matter what. They just like and are really good at it. We consider ourselves as a technology company. So California is our R&D center. So we are, we've developed technology which can rapid prototype uh, a product in four days. Typically in molded fiber, it takes three to four weeks, right? So we have that. Uh, we have uh, 50 to 60 patent claims around our product designs and we have our proprietary machinery. So that's where we add value. And I'm having similar conversations with industrial partners in UK, Japan, Indonesia, USA, all over the globe, because that's the way to go. There is no way Zoom or any other individual company can scale up the supply fast enough because it takes time. And second, it's capital intensive. So we are essentially partnering up with manufacturers and saying, hey, look, we will do the sales. We know people like Rakesh and Sandeep. We'll give you the designs. You just do the manufacturing and let's let's make the world a better place. Like that's, that's the philosophy we are going with right now. It's very, very difficult to uh, set up all these factories uh, I think the key is collaboration. And I think uh, once you are able to match everyone's, uh, every stakeholder's requirement, uh, there's someone who needs to tie and stitch that up together. So fantastic web of brilliant. Uh, Munishwar, uh, you, you serve one of the most delicious momos that we've had uh, in India for a while. We obviously used to have them, uh, you know, on the roadsides or at, very fancy places, but then you made a product or you came up with a product where we could uh, eat them uh, with a lot of uh, trust and faith in the brand. You know, we could order, the, order them at home. Uh, we could feel, you know, that they're, they're healthy as well. And I remember all the food uh, conferences across the country. I always used to skip my lunch and I used to be hanging around your counter getting my steamed and slightly tossed momos and enjoying it. And I said, that's, that's my lunch. Yeah. So, uh, your no views. So very well said Kapil. So if, if you remember, we also met like this, I was standing on one of my counter catering the consumers and all making our product to be lovely. Do we have them up? So you, you and me, Bumped together over there, where I remember, still remember you like that corn and cheese, that fantastic one. So that's the thing. So uh, if I talk about that uh, packaging and all, definitely packaging is gonna be a future. Reason being, very well said by Ranjan also that people are moving into more into a delivery concepts and all. So though we also, uh, as Sandeep uh, very well uh, quoted that. The business of uh, dining ratio has shifted to a delivery ratio, and where delivery ratio has shifted to a dining ratio. Now, uh, I I have learned this thing since I have started my career in a uh, food uh, retail and all. That uh, even though in a childhood also I have uh, heard these uh, saying by people. People first eat by their eyes. Okay, so when when your mom make a lovely food at home, so you see that oh wow, it's a lovely paratha and all like this, and you crave to have those things. Simultaneously, when you go to a restaurant, you find that uh, uh, delicious foods when you are having a dining experience. But now what happened when we have a challenge, no, we cannot go to outside and we cannot have a uh, dining uh, experience and all. But we require and we crave for the food and all. We are, and we have a trust with the brand and we want to call up them. So now what happened, the first eye which goes is not the food. Now it is the packaging because how lovely the packaging look like will automatically increase your appetite and the craving factor to go and hit for that particular product and definitely helping us in terms of creating the loyalty and increasing the penetration of the consumer. So I'll just tell you like recently uh, in the month of February, uh, Muli Krishna who is our CBO, uh, so we were having a uh, di uh, discussions uh, in a one of our review meet. So he, uh, we decided that we should have on a fantastic packaging sh which should go when we are going for a delivery. So it is not the COVID which has made the delivery uh, in our mindset, but it is like beyond six, eight months before that also we are the like, whole team. We were focusing on the delivery even though in many a stage, uh, Ranjan will witness, we have 
take an opinion from Zomato and other aggregators also that how the packaging should go like because we keep on uh, tracking the consumer experience and a feedback about not only about the taste and the service time it is also about the packaging also and we take it very seriously so we uh, develop a small box i just show you this is how a more box look like and which is uh, something which is in a food pan coated so it will increase the shelf life of a product which reaches to you it's in a hot end piping you will feel it over there so this has actually increase the value for us so if i tell you it's like uh, if uh, x number of transactions we were doing uh, in uh, aggregators it has actually bumped up to your next level keeping in this uh, keeping aside this uh, pandemic situation but in this situation also what a kind of a revenue we are generating from a delivery and the consumer uh, repetition repetition of the orders it is just because it's more first important is the packaging second definitely yes the quality of your food and the trust with your brand so as we were uh, and we also being highlighting more importantly and a factor is that the 3h concept this is the brand promise which we are giving and uh, highlighting is that one is the health uh, healthy foods happiness and hygiene factor so in those things so every packaging every warm momo carry bag if i show you this is the warm momo carry bag okay yeah, that's nice. this, so we put this sticker over here so this sticker shows one thing is that what is the chef temperature so who is the person who is making a what are his what is his body temperature to build that definitely many brands are also doing what is the uh, body temperature of a staff who is doing a packaging packing for a consumer and what is the rider temperature so this is one of the rider temperature delivery boy temperature also came up from the zomato that uh, a max uh, safety uh, things so this is also as he said very well that uh, millions of views on the max safety video and all the day your brand got a badge of that max safety you automatically your uh, chances of ordering has gone higher and are higher so we are main and core focus on this the packaging though uh, our uh, food and things are not uh, required that kind of a sustainable packaging as of now but definitely going for future it will be a requirement for us also because this is going to be a future uh, prospect for us and this is something which is an has to be an eye catching and most importantly we have to uh, what uh, i feel is that we have to focus on one more factor is that your packaging should promise your brand promise why because if your packaging is going in a different direction your brand is going in a different direction you are collapsed so this is the time when you can encash as very well sandeep said that this is the time we are every brand is actually furnishing their back to basics and all whether it is from the learning whether it is from the supply chain whether it's on the product quality whether it is a uh, consumer experience whatever the segment you take it up everyone is a brushing up their knowledge is and getting back to basics so why as soon as we come out when the vaccine will be in the market and the people will be uh, roaming here and there with the fearless that time the brand promise those who are brand was delivered the promise during these pandemic situation will have a time to encash that particular moment over that moment absolutely that is what i feel is that so most importantly we have to look into a packaging that too in a way that it is actually hitting the brand promise Let's right. let's look at your bag again, the yellow bag. So that's your delivery bag, or that's the bag in which the product goes in. And that packaging box that you had that earlier used to be maybe a silver foil box. Now it's well branded uh, again. So this would maybe give it more uh, shelf life to your hot uh, momos when they reach home, maybe. Yes. Yes. So yeah. I tell you this. Yeah. So uh, I tell you, like uh, definitely the cost factor of this particular product might be hitting me one or two percent extra, but not yeah. this thing. But this is actually helping me to generate more transactions also, with which ultimately that two percent will minimize to point two percent in a future prospect. That is how the game of the business is going on, and this is something which is lovely. I tell you, I bought I bought a chocolate mo. I uh, took a chocolate mo for my daughter at my place. And she says, "Papa, what a lovely box! Can I take lunch on this box, man? Beta, it is. It is just you have to use it and then uh, throw it up. Though it is different, but I can definitely get you something uh, box prepared for a lunch box like this for you. Even though I just show you one more thing for a beverage. In delivery, we uh, launch uh, thunders, which is one of our signature. Yes. Uh, thunder glass, yes. So, yeah. So this is the thunder glass which we have launched up." and ultimately so the biggest challenge for the drink is also what you see is what you feel so initially when it was a plastic you can see your drink how it look like but okay. what about the plastic ban and all and we as a brand we are we zero plastic uh, brand 
So what we have to do? So we do uh, took this reusable glass and all. So it is very lovely. Look like when you eat, uh, drink your kala gatta or uh, orange mojito, my favorite one, or the virgin mojito, which is the favorite for all of us. Okay. So when you see this and people sipping like this with a sipper and all or with a straw, it brilliant. It's a one wonderful ima uh, image in in terms of consumer, and it actually create a brand loyalty. And which Very good. Uh, uh, consumer coming back to us again and again. So, so that box that you showed, uh, Ria Weber, uh, Ved, uh, would you have any recommendation on what we guys can do to 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 keep the momos uh, hot, warm, the way that they are? I think what they've done is a, a considerably great job from what it was earlier. I remember it was like a silver foil or something. True. What what do you guys suggest? Anyone? I can I can jump in. Uh, Ria, is that okay? Sure. I, please go ahead. <laughs> yeah. So so there is a so as far as you know the three of us uh, we are concerned we are all molding from plant fibers, uh, and uh, that leads to uh, certain challenges in terms of the product itself because it's a breathable product. And uh, typically, what Munishwar has created is actually a non-sustainable product. It may look paperish from the top, uh, but it's got a multi-layer sort of system with a metal uh, metallization or a laminate on the inside, which actually makes it non-recyclable and non-compostable. It does, of course, uh, as uh, Munishwar said, it will retain the heat. Uh, but I think it has a bigger issue. Of course, I realize that Warm Momos has great branding on top of this. And that's the other challenge we face in molded fiber that, you know, the printability and the printing itself uh, is difficult uh, onto the fiber. So, of course, as uh, time passes, I'm sure uh, there will be various innovations. And we do realize that many of the brands want the food to remain hot uh, over a period of time. Uh, but uh, as for now, I don't uh, see a molded product uh, doing that job. That said, a molded product, like you know, the product Munishwar showed, it's actually not microwavable because it's metallized. But a molded product uh, can be put in an oven, can be microwaved, can be frozen. So you know, so that's the benefit that you have. But it's fundamentally uh, breathable because it's natural. So can I just add to that? I know that um, Veth talked about mentioned the limitations of printing and branding. So I know in our experience, what we found is on a on a curved surface, it is, um, so for instance, a bowl or the outside of a cup, uh, that is a challenge. But for a flat surface, which would apply to a wild warm or box or any kind of box, really, I mean, or a plate. So we, for instance, we supply Cinnabon um, and their plates have a printed uh, on the outring. And so it is possible on a flat surface. Um, but not on a the limitation is um, but yeah and I think from Ved I'm sure you'd agree with me I mean we both have applied to the Indian railways you know and I think that in terms of I know that the food is served uh, the food is plated in our it is then stored 10 hours it then goes into like one of those trolleys and then gets onto the, like in front of a passenger so I know in terms of um, durability and just you know being able to heat that food or retain heat I'm sure uh, Munishwar if you know you had to tell us that your mo I mean your momos are uh, boxed and then in X time it, you know it has to sort of it has to survive I suppose um, X number of minutes or hours or whatever um, and I'm sure if that was an indefinite uh, you know we could innovate and figure out a solution yeah, just, just to add to that, that's a good point. Uh, so going back to our pizza boxes, because we were doing uh, uh, our own delivery, we knew what was the dwell time. So it was about 12 minutes. And we figured out how much moisture our pizzas emit in 12 minutes. And we changed the slurry, which is the, uh, the composition which you use to make this product, in a way that absorbs that amount of moisture in 12 minutes. So the end, now that was a very, very specific custom solution. And you need high volumes, right? You can't go and do that for every, uh, again, the long tail. But for brands like Wow Momos, as uh, Ria mentioned, if the constraints are well defined, you can come up and play around uh, to come up with solutions that 
uh, will be able to perform. So, yeah. 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 Uh, I tell you, the, definitely yes, Ria. Uh, it will be a, some kind of a time constraint has to be there because if there will be no time uh, foundation on the product uh, and specifically with the food, it might get contagious and it will not be good for the consumer and all. As we keep Absolutely. on talking, we keep on talking with the aggregators, Zavato and other aggregators on the uh, basics of the taking of uh, understanding on the how the uh, packaging needs to be improved and all. So average, uh, Nandan, correct me. Uh, average uh, delivery time is between 25 to 35 minutes uh, from a, a, a pickup to a delivering a consumer. Yeah. So average is actually now much lower, also because you know the current lockdown, etc., yeah. is lesser traffic. So 40 minutes. But yeah, the average uh, pickup to drop time for us would be in the range of 16 to 18 minutes. Yeah. yeah. So if yeah. and this uh, container can uh, sustain a work for 45 to uh, 50 minutes so which is uh, a fairly a decent amount of a time for a consumer because when a food reaches to a home you does not jump into the food and you have it you just at least place it on a table you bring some uh, cutlery if you don't want to have in that packaging or something or you call up from your family member because these days people are more into a uh, family uh, uh, bonding and all so they call up okay food is here and also it requires it that that is also time consuming things are also so keeping that 16-20 minutes of a delivery time and another 15-20 minutes to consuming and all those things, it's being taken care between 45 to 50 minutes the product or probably to 60 minutes maximum. We did a testing up to 60 minutes also. That has the product has actually sustained their originality of the food which is being there. So I mean I'm pretty confident that that's a timeline that we can we can innovate around. Um, so we've done more than that. Um, in terms of timelines, so that can be a On a printing on a curve, and this is the, something which is uh, challenging. So I just kind of suggestion. Though I'm not a master in this, I'm just an operator, and I know how to make consumer happy. Okay, and uh, you guys are the uh, leaders in this thing. So it's like this is a uh, this is something which is on a plain sheet. Okay, and then we fold it back after the printing and after the. Uh, this lamination, uh, this food graded thing, lamination, and all. After that, we made it on a converting into a box, so which can be a feasible and a uh, probably and possible, which is same like this also. Printing, this printing happens on a plain sheet, and then we make it uh, with the molding, with the uh, equipments and all, and that convert it into this. So our, I mean, like Web have touched upon, is that we work on, we don't work on those flat sheets. We obviously work on a slurry, uh, on a slurry basis. So, um, you know, the printing happens once the product is finished. And so even for, like I said, Cinnabon is a brand that we print, uh, that we supply and they have printed plates. Subway, uh, when we started working with them, also wanted uh, printed and we did do that, but then they decided to go um, and they had, they replaced their plastic salad boxes with ours. And, uh, you know, so they decided to print initially, but then, I mean, I. Decided, eventually decided against it. So yeah, I mean, if it's a box like what you've just shown, um, branding it shouldn't be a problem, but a cup wouldn't be possible. So I guess uh, let's, uh, you know, keep the conversation open for coming weeks where all of you can interact and engage with each other. Uh, Ved, uh, I think to you, uh, you know, we also understand that uh, since the industry is, is growing, like uh, our friends uh, like Manishwar and Rakesh are responsible for employees in Sandeep and then so many other leaders in the industry, it's also very imperative that companies like Ecoware or Zoom or others, they have their own strength in certain areas. I have my strength in a particular area. We are looking at experience. We understand very things on that. But the other people who are good in the same you at as as you know promoting your company in Akka and Chuck and 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 being a proponent of, of this particular topic that we are getting to sustainable packaging. How do you think alliances should be open here? What type of collaborations do you see should be coming up? How do we engage stakeholders here to really make the new move instead of just just having a great conversation. Well, thank you. Sorry, I was just checking if I was unmuted. Uh, thank you so much uh, for asking that, Kapil, because uh, I'm actually 
uh, we as a company and we in particular have been wanting to do that for a while. And I know that Ecoware and us, we met a few times to try and see how we can come together to form a closer alliance. And you know, there was wonderful conversations that happened around that. And we are now actually uh, with, uh, with, we have a very innovative and a very focused business team. So with that in place, uh, I'm personally starting to spend more time on what, exactly what you're talking about. And uh, we are starting to create uh, this whole uh, idea of a global compostables alliance. Uh, which is to try and get the compostable product manufacturers together. Uh, I do think that that's really important uh, because the speed of change has to shift significantly if we are to really impact uh, the planet. Because, uh, because you know, so the awareness, uh, we understand that the awareness is rising, but there is a certain amount of time that is taken for a habit change to happen. Uh, and if if there is uh, more sort of active uh, effort, uh, then, you know, that is bound to happen faster. So the idea is threefold in terms of creating the alliance. Uh, the first one is to we realize that there are a certain uh, amount of barriers of entry and it could be uh, more business oriented like capital that you mentioned. Uh, but it could also be a lot of um, a lot of lot of things around ideas and uh, knowledge and things like suppliers, uh, uh, technology. So the first thing is that we are trying to be working on creating a suppliers database, where hopefully we can even get user ratings in place, so we can actually know which are the good suppliers for machinery, for technology, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And it's not it's a wide array of products, right? So it's not just it's bioplastics, it's paper, it's molded products, it's various others so so that the second of course uh, like i mentioned knowledge can be in various angles it could be innovation it could be uh, policy uh, it could be uh, exchange of ideas uh, just what we are doing right now uh, in terms of um, exchanging uh, thoughts uh, so you know creating that platform as well and uh, the third we find is that if we can manage to get all the producers on board then it becomes a decent marketplace where uh, our friends uh, here, Rakesh and Sandeep and Munishwar, uh, can, have in mu can have a much easier time. Today, they have to seek out individuals like me, uh, Ria, or Webhub, and many others, and then try and figure it out themselves. Here, if they, we can create a platform for them, and they can understand what is the kind of product they, that they want to go for, and then uh, try and do an easy search of who are the producers of molded products, and try and see what uh, they have an offer, it'll be a lot easier uh, for them. So the effort is to create the back end uh, this year and uh, hopefully be able to get people together, create a more transparent space and enable uh, more growth in the space to really be able to make an impact, which you know, we as individual companies, of course, trying, but you know, coming together, we'll be able to do a lot more. Fantastic. Uh, thanks for, for uh, you know, putting that across. Also, uh, with what I understand, apart from the tablewares, also at Yash Paka, you know, the bags business that you guys are, that's also packaging in one way. Could you just give some information around that? How is that going? What's the opportunity around that? How do you advocate that product? Absolutely. So that's our mainstay. Uh, we've been manufacturing uh, pulp and paper from sugarcane residue, the same thing that uh, the molded products are made from. Uh, for 1983, so for about 37 years now. Uh, and what we have done in the recent past, we, have, we were a very, very specialized producer of products, uh, and it mainly, it always went into packaging. So, you know, uh, things like the syringe bags when you, or medicine bags that you use when you take pop-out pills, or uh, things like the syringe, uh, syringe uh, covers again, or uh, surgical gloves, so those are medical applications, all the McDonald bags uh, that you get, um, you know, and things like that. So we were in very a variety of uh, products there. What we've done in the recent past is to focus more or less in two domains, and that comes from our uh, focus on compostable products. Uh, the first being moving towards flexible packaging, which is eventually snack bags, potato chip bags, and things like that for longer term packaging. And the second, of course, is the molded product side, which you guys have been hearing about. Uh, so, so the effort is to be able to move in that direction by improving the base product significantly. So we've been working, we've just, um, we've created a product uh, 
uh, which is grease resistant, water resistant, a little bit stretchable uh, for bag applications. Uh, we've created, and it's very, very thin. It's not like a thick carry bag. Uh, we've created, uh, we worked with an instant noodle manufacturer and we created a, a, a product which can be, you know, the plastics can be replaced there. So, you know, so there is a wide variety variety of a uh, wide variety of uh, innovations that are happening in that domain and of course the effort is to fi find ways to have more sustainable products and of course uh, with that i just want to put in one rider that you know sometimes we talk a lot about recyclability and we as an industry know that that's an absolute misnomer recycled is many times much worse than actually because there is no such thing as recycled it's either it's basically downcycled and you know that takes so much effort uh, it's much worse many most times it's much worse than a virgin product so it's good to talk about it in the consumer space but uh, if you look at impact and the life, life cycle analysis it will actually mostly be worse so before i move to rakesh on we're going to start now wrapping up the session but amongst the three of you ved uh, ria and and weber since we talked about uh, recycling you know um, or reuse uh, you know uh, but again, what you said that, you know, recycling might not be a great word. Uh, we also understand that some brands may say that we are uh, eco-friendly, we are uh, compliant, we are X, Y, Z. However, you know, we all understand there's a lot of green sheen around it, a lot of green washing around it. Uh, I don't know if you can blame them for it because they really don't have control over the entire uh, supply chain uh, as well. You know, you guys are, are uh, stakeholders, flag bearers in terms of what you're proposing. So what would be something that you would suggest to all the brands out here, including um, uh, Zomato out here, who, who in one way is a branding st extension of delivering their products? We can start Weber with you and then Ria and then our whoever. I, I'm absolutely fine. Sure. Uh, so I think uh, I, you you use the right word. I don't think you can blame the brands because I think it was like three years ago, four years ago, people were not really talking about plastics in the ocean. Like right. it's a recent right. phenomena where consumers have now finally started to raise concerns. Uh, so there is eagerness to learn what by like, I'll be honest, two years ago, even I didn't know the difference between sustainable and biodegradable and compostable. Like I did not. Right. Uh, and uh, I think that's majority of the consumers out there. Uh, going back to the point which uh, uh, the brands on the platform uh, brought up that, hey, it's about building trust. So you can you can say, OK, my product is sustainable. <laughs> sustainable is actually pretty broad. Like there's no certification for sustainability. Right. 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 So that's essentially a. Uh, kind of a misnomer and like when the consumer actually realizes that uh, it's uh, it's it's actually not recyclable it's actually not biodegradable or it takes 1200 years to recycle and that is where you lose the trust so i think brands need to be honest uh, if it's compostable they can talk about that if it's biodegradable if it's sustainable in in some sort of respect i think that is very very important uh, and you see it with even the PNGs and the Coca Colas of the world. Like they try to hide behind these words, but I think it's time where they have to come out uh, and be very, very transparent because the consumer is way more aware uh, about all these terms. And, and that they owe it to the consumer, even if they're not. Brilliant. Fantastic, Weber. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much for joining. Ria? Okay, so, I mean, I was just going to just define a couple, we've talked about sustainability, but let's just define it for a second, right? So when you, I mean, typically the traditional meaning is when you basically meeting your own needs without compromising the ability of future generations, right? Um, to meet their own needs. So it's also talk, when you talk about in, what's also known as intergenerational well-being, right? That's what sustainability really is. Um, and I can tell you, when I moved here, I was absolutely shocked that we had no formal waste segregation. We threw all our waste in one dustbin. And 11 years later, unfortunately, that is still happening. So I do agree with Ved, you know, where I think recyclability, recycling is a farce. I, and like I've said, the need is now. Um, the need to be sustainable. It needs to be a serious commitment. So let's not, let's stay away from the greenwash. Let's be sure about the closed loop solutions. Uh, and I emphasize closed loop um, that, you know, we're, we're talking about. 
And I think that brands, you know, you take a lot of pride in, uh, the food brands take a lot of pride in what they make and what they're serving. And I think they need to take pride in being sustainable too, right? And I think that needs to come up because like Webb have also said, your consumer is changing. And couple, you and I talked about it. Your new consumer in the next five years is the Greta Thunbergs. It's our kids. They know more than, you know, um, we know. And they're so well connected, Webber. Like Webber said that, you know, that one surfer, that one tweet yeah. can destroy your brand. And that's only going to get, like, not worse, but that's just going to get amplified, that connectivity, right, in the generations to come. And I think ultimately businesses need to see sustainability as an immense value addition. It's an immense opportunity as a CEO. I mean, you as an investor, you've touched upon it as a founder, as a shareholder. When you look ahead, the reality is that your business, um, you know, at some point we're all looking at funding or selling or M&As, et cetera. And your business is just going to have plain and simple more value if you have sustainable business models, you know, built in compared to if you don't. Um, so I think that this is the future. It is the need. And um, and the commitment is now. It's not about we will look into it in the future. <laughs> Great. Great. So I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to add a little bit. So thank you, Ria. That was wonderful. <laughs> so I think, I think I'm just going to add on to what uh, Ria said. Uh, that I think in the end, what is important, and I was listening to Rakesh, I joined a little late. Uh, so I was listening to Rakesh earlier, and he talked a lot about economics. And I understand that I'm in business. You know, this is this is where we, most of us are. Uh, but like Ria said, in the end, we are all consumers. You know, our children also eat from that same dish. We also sort of relate to this idea of sustainability and compostability and, you know, the, the, the ideas that are out there and we realize the kind of damage we are doing. And I really think, honestly, even as a businessman, I really think we have no right. We have no right to sort of damage the earth the way we do. And every action does it, you know, and that includes our own actions at our own industry. So we look at both. Uh, what we are doing is looking at both products and processes. Uh, and that's deeply driven uh, by the idea of being able to leave the earth better. The way we see it and, uh, you know, UBC all around us, the way we see it, we are deeply influenced by nature because uh, nature packages like uh, nothing else does. You can look at the bananas and the oranges and the pomegranates and the peas and the peanuts and our own skins and what have you. So, you know, it's amazing the kind of packaging and it carries uh, gas and it carries liquids and it carries solids and it is, you know, hard and it is soft and all that. So a lot of our work is being influenced by that. Uh, we do think uh, that uh, the uh, economics are have to eventually work out, but I would really like to reiterate it's not about the economics. It is a much bigger issue than pure one or we, we were we were talking about one or two or three percent. It's not even it's really not that we have to do it for our future generations. And I hope, you know, large uh, companies that have huge influence like uh, Zomato and Burger King and Wow Momos are going to take this mantle because we are all going to have to serve our children and their children and the generations beyond that. It says, I love the way Ria defined uh, the idea of sustainability that, you know, we, we are not looking to work for just our generation. It has to be, we are, we are not even, I won't even call us custodians. We are just, you know, travelers on the planet and we have to be with not even the same. We have not even sustainable. We have to regenerate. We have to leave it better than we found it. And every step we that, uh, take in, in our lives, has to have uh, that idea in it. Thank you. Can I just actually add something to what Ved just mentioned? And I'm saying this, uh, you know, I'm just saying this as a as a, as a consumer, right? As a, as a probably a buyer of uh, sustainable packaging, right? You know, if you ask me in the in the order of hierarchy, cost probably is the least most least important aspect or the least bottleneck. And I'll tell you why. I'm not just saying that just for the sake of saying. When you look at the total cost in use, that's where one has to really evaluate cost. What I mean is, I'll just give a quick example of what we are facing as a brand. Um, see, as a burger brand, we don't make money by selling burgers. We actually make money by selling drinks and fries, right? And in the delivery business, you can't deliver drinks and can't retain the quality of that drink, right? So, even if I have to spend, let's say, 10% of the product cost on packaging, I don't mind paying that money because currently 
the only option i have in hand is actually hand over a can of pepsi to my customer where which is more like a retail product where customer do not see a value i don't make money customer don't see value you don't sell beverages so cost is probably the third in hierarchy first is solutions i need solutions from the platform here i need solutions from my converter uh, you know from my packaging industry fellows give me solution we'll figure out and and i think rakesh also did mention that as a brand we can always figure out ways to recover that money we will as a brand will always find an roi trust me that will not be a bottleneck what we need is make in india whatever i don't want to import make in india we want to be manufacturing here we want to buy from local source we want to support that cause right second give me solution cost we will figure out and i am not saying just on behalf of one brand i am saying it by the way i mean i am a packaging uh, technologist i am a pass out of iip so i have a special corner for you know a special affinity towards packaging so so maybe a 1% premium on that but on jokes if I, give a solution brand can figure out ways to absorb that cost trust me on that thank you so much uh, sandeep for putting your heart out and uh... speaking it very clearly in terms of how you you feel about the role of packaging and also what you mentioned that you know costs are a function of something and that something is what we as we as leaders know how to create and to get out of it as well um rakesh your closing comments and then and then munisher and i'm i'm going to close the session but i'm also going to ask you rakesh you know uh we have fssai as a food regulator when it comes to labeling when it comes to ingredients uh, some sort of disclosures and other things as well uh, there's a 48 uh, point checklist that we do for a lot of uh, restaurants uh, and you know we yeah. upload a uh, report on the uh, on the website as well uh, what's on the packaging is there something that you believe is missing there uh, you know you have a very important uh, uh opportunity out here as 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 zomato to talk about this uh, for for the industry so uh, what's your what's your what's your take on it yeah so i'm glad that you asked that question and uh, and i I've, i've been pretty vocal about this one in particular i think around uh, a year back we had a very similar conversation with the can as well and it was largely around the fact that you know you have an fssi checklist or you have some other hygiene checklist as a checklist it's a pretty transparent one it's black and white largely right um the fact that green washing exists in some way or the other is that this is a very muddled world right very very muddled world um i remember i was talking to a few folks who thought that the black colored plastic box is actually a sustainable packaging and they thought just because it's black maybe there is something you know natural going in it right um and when i dug deeper i realized that uh, yeah that's a perception that a lot of people carry a lot of people carry the perception that the white one is plastic but the black one is not right um so there is definitely lack of consumer awareness but a large part of that is on upon us right and i do actually walk away with a lot of responsibility for the aggregators as well we have been thinking about that but i'll tell you what we are thinking about later and i think web up touched upon that slightly at the start but i think there is there is nothing which emphatically tells a consumer that this is sustainable the world is so muddled right now when i started you know uh, sort of creating a team internally to start focusing on that that's the first time i really understood when someone says you know this is Uh, made of corn starch and this is biodegradable when someone says this we have actually created a biodegradable plastic right <laughs> which is biodegradable yes but it really takes like 2600 years to <laughs> biodegrade and that too it doesn't right until unless you put it in the right temperature humidity and i don't know what all right you have to probably take it to mars um so uh, the there is a lot of greenwashing there is a lot of uh, muddled concept in terms of consumer to really know what is you know truly sustainable for the world and uh, that we all probably need to play that role i think as aggregators we can play that role uh, a lot more um and i think it's it's important for us to take that responsibility we do more than a million orders a day in some way or the other we are talking to more than 1 million 
users every day, right? Um, we are probably talking to 50 million users a month. Um, even if we go round and round in six months, we'll probably cover a large part of the population, right? Um, so we do take that responsibility on ourselves. Um, I think that's one. But the second to sort of just impress on the other point, there has to be very clear standards. There has to be, uh, you know, uh, there is a need for that standard to really define this is grade one, grade two, grade five, whatever it takes, right? Uh, this is anyways a very muddled world. Right? Think about organic. It's, yeah. It lies in the same, you know, it's impossible to figure what really organic means. If you go on the net right now and figure out, it will take you an hour to figure what you thought is organic and what actually is organic. Or natural is. No one knows what the word yeah. natural is. So, yeah. So I think it's important uh, on this one side in particular um, for this to have some sort of mass adoption. Very, very important, both on the brand side and the consumer side. Uh, I think some brands will play the uh, sort of play by the front foot and make users aware that, see, this is what I tell as sustainable packaging. But when the user moves to the other brand, he has no clue to figure it out. And hence, you know, his uh, relationship with that sustainable packaging goes away, withers away uh, because he's getting brainwashed every with every other point of contact. Right. So I think that's very, very critical. Uh, folks, uh, aggregators, uh, manufacturers, government, environmentalists, whatever it takes, whosoever it takes, uh, should definitely sort of do um, something in that regard. I think that's very, very critical. Uh, second is uh, the bunch of things that we are trying to do on our side as well. Um, we as a platform have a great opportunity as well as a responsibility to help users discover and uncover that is this truly sustainable packaging? You know, let me sort of give a very small example. If I was to put a small sticker on a restaurant saying that this restaurant uses sustainable packaging, we will start seeing consumers talk about it. Right? We will start seeing consumers talk about it. If I actually put up an unboxing video and saying that this video is made of, of you know, uses all unsustainable packaging, ask users to share, they will share it. So there is definitely a lot of responsibility on us and we need to figure out how do we sort of solve that, right? We were trying to go the other route till now to be absolutely open. When I and Web have started working almost one and a half years back is to go brand first route. Um, and we said that, um, can we actually take the bull by the horns and solve some of the issues that the world has always said cannot be solved with sustainable packaging. In fact, that's why we took up the hardest of the set cases. I remember I said to Web, if you can, yeah, if the package, the package that you create can carry Rasam, then I'm done, right? Mm -hmm. I'm cool, right? Uh, so we actually took upon some of the harder use cases. Um, and I think we have seen good traction, uh, uh, at least with select brands. But on the other side, because um, either we as aggregators, either the rest of the industry hasn't done and put a lot of energy on consumer awareness, it hasn't seen a good cross-network effect that we would have actually wanted to see. So you will definitely hear from Zomato. Uh, I've uh, been very inspired by the conversation today. A bunch of things where we were thinking on what we can do on that side. But yes, um, we'll figure something out, just like most of the situations we have till now. Very good. And that's what we expect out of uh, Rakesh, you and Zomato uh, as the important uh, stakeholder in the ecosystem. I think you have a lot uh, that you can do. And there's a lot of responsibility as well. And I'm sure uh, you know you, you will make a difference here. Thanks for joining in, uh, Unishwar. Uh, we'll have your closing comments, and then I'm just going to wrap up the session. Yeah. So uh, it's like uh, all the partners have told about the sustainable packaging, and all. Definitely, that's going to be a future which we have to look and we have to do some kind of R and D and all. But my uh, insight to uh, this, I would like to uh, put it into a platform or an open forum that we need We need to also shout for a couple of supports in a different manner also, apart from the sustainable packaging, because ultimately that is also one of the cost effective things which is going to be. But the, as uh, Ria said that, or uh, Weber said that, that there is a heavy duty on importing plus the GST of a premium and all. So what I say that we as a brand, uh, we are also raising a voice uh, to a government that we should operate with a single window concept for a restaurant of, uh, owners because what happens if you go for XYZ license, uh, licensing or a certifications for any ex, uh, particular thing with a different government bodies, you are end up with the first frustration of uh, traveling to here and there 
then their and their and then their uh, other things comes out into a picture so what we should also uh, raise an a voice as an uh, entrepreneur also as an a leader of an organization of our industry also that we should uh, actually raise an a voice to a government to put in a single window concept for licensing for any kind of a certification yeah. for r and d and also it will help us for all of us together because in that way what will happen is very well uh, ranjan said ki uh, consumer took a particular thing from uh, one of the uh, vendor as an a sustainable packaging and when he goes to second vendor he gives in a different ball to get picture all together and uh, we as an a leader or a, a consumer or a, a organization get confused whether he was right or he was he is right or uh, what with with whom we have to go forward so that is the biggest thing and a challenge because what will happen all these things when coming into a single window and it is like in a government is authorizing and uh, supporting with the certification and everything into that that will give a clarity to a consumer also to us also to them also and we all as in a part of an ecosystem will work very healthy and effective manner to bring the all things into a right platform this is what i oh. Uh, absolutely i think i think george uh, and and the team at uh, oddbox are hearing you out so maybe they would they would create another session or a panel where they get some stakeholders from the government and and players like you to come and talk about a single window look at the employment that the fnb industry generates look at the taxes that we contribute look at the tummies that we fill look at the impact that we make there's no reason why we shouldn't be heard for something that is right so uh, absolutely uh, Uh, thanks everyone for joining to like uh, closing comments uh, uh, you know i i i normally believe in in uh, in a few things this is something that i strongly believe in and and you know just as a poll you know uh, all the stakeholders here you know if we just do a poll and send a message uh, to consumers would you like to have your food something that is sustainable i don't think i need to answer that now the rest we all need to figure out the rest you know when when the answer is going to be 100% uh, the rest follows uh, in suit of that you know in terms of how we create it one of the important things and lessons that i have also learned whenever we have tried to pioneer something that has not been done before which is which is a which is always a bigger challenge because it's always easier to do things that have been done earlier but that's not why we are we are here on this panel today uh I would like to talk about two very quick case studies to start up some mind. One is by the name Genuine Mark, and the sheer reason of creating that, where I co-founded that startup, was because of the anti-counterfeiting that was happening in the industry with regards to uh, infant milk powder, liquor, uh, you name it, right? The amount of counterfeiting. And the industry of counterfeits is so large so there had to be a solution to that now you can't catch hold of the manufacturer but actually when a counterfeit ghee tin is found with the manufacturer's labeling the guy who's the who's not the real manufacturer the guy who's the real manufacturer gets caught that what have you made and he hasn't obviously but that's how because you can't catch the counterfeiter right and that is when we created genuine mark which is a uh, anti counterfeiting technology which allows the manufacturer to control visibility transparency of the entire supply chain to the end consumer so even when you buying an electronic product you activate a digital warranty the manufacturer gets to know who the end consumer is the entire ecosystem has changed we just started this company 2 years ago uh, we've got funded we've we've getting more and more money into the company what it's done for the manufacturer it's it's allowed them to bring their cost down because now they're selling more right the counterfeits have gone out so similarly i urge uh, you know when it comes to uh, sustainable packaging there has to be something on a tech side or something that enables what you guys are doing your visibility transparency has to increase awareness with the consumer has to i don't know the difference between some of the words that you guys have said because i have not studied those subjects but that doesn't mean i don't care about it right so there has to be a way that you guys figure that out a very uh, strong suggestion on that that has worked for me in the past we started a concept known as igniting minds and ideas uh, inspired by our former president uh, honorable apj abdul kalam 
and he involved students on certain causes if you guys create something as brands from ishwar to sandeep to rakesh if you involve young minds from riya to ved and to vabab and you aware you you sensitize educate these these young young brilliant minds i can show you there's not going to be a problem about this the problem that we're trying to grapple with so that's one of the other things i like to you know just put across and uh, third uh, you know i think this has been a great uh, panel discussion uh, saturday uh, early evening that has ended on a very positive note uh, I, i i can see smiles around in this discussion and uh, that i can see some commitments coming through as well uh, let's take this ahead uh, this group is not going to dissolve till i see a purchase order coming through guys so so let's keep it alive for a while but yeah i mean all respect to your decisions and the way that all of you do business but um, thank you very much uh, george for allowing me to thank to you. moderate the session and uh, that's it from me thank you thank you everyone for taking the time off i mean i i thoroughly enjoyed the session so thank you so much for all the interest so what we're going to do our first time let's do a thumbs up and if someone is going to take the screenshot or i can also do a I don't know if the selfie is going to come, but one second, let me see. I can do yes, a. I don't think I can take a screenshot. I can do a screenshot if you want. I'll take one too. You can post it in the group also. Great. Very Thank cool. you. Everyone. Have a great day. I'll touch base with you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone. Good evening. Thank you so much. So I can leave. Bye, Akish. Bye, bye. Bye. Cheers. Cheers. Hey Kapil. Hey buddy. Super. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I hope it's a